uh, introduction. It's, I'm too small to introduce him. Okay, but I have to say a few words actually. So, Professor Bhamchari is a well known scientist. Uh, everybody know about him. He did his PhD from ISC Bangalore, and then he was professor in ISC Bangalore. Uh, then he joined uh, CSR Institute earlier for CBT, but he made the new issue for IGIB. <coughs> Everybody know about the IGIB. So he, uh, he is the founder director of IGIB. Uh, so he is responsible for making that institute actually. And today everybody know about the IGIB. Was so a former DG of CSI. Beyond this actually, he is an excellent mentor actually. I am one of the mentee. Uh, so he mentored a lot of people actually, including me. And particularly IGIB is a product. And I will not go for his achievements actually. He has nearly all the award, Insa Award, Santi Saru Bhatnagar Award, or all fellowships, uh, whatever the major fellowships are there, all the awards are there. If I start to count it, it will be too long actually. So I will not take much time with, uh, in the introduction. I will give the opportunity to Professor Brahmchari to talk to you actually. So Professor Brahmchari, you are welcome for that. Thank you, Raghav. I can only tell that you are the only person who can make me wake up early after Dasera and uh, plan to make me to give a talk at nine o'clock in the morning. You know, after I retired, I decided I'll not give any lecture, anything before 11 o'clock. But Raghav is the exception and he always makes me do things uh, differently. I was looking through your program and I saw I not only have most of your, uh, my uh, students or old associates or I'll say even grand students uh, in your lecture series. So I was wondering, I, you know, I agreed to give this lecture, but I was wondering what is that I can tell now, which all these people don't know. So I can only say that I will try to spend a few minutes telling you uh, how important it is today's context to worry about health informatics. I like the word health informatics beyond genome informatics. The reason is we have an opportunity. And since Raghav has restricted me and said, I must talk on open source drug discovery, I am not taking you to other areas of uh, informatics that interests me. I, as a scientist, from the young days, I always like to be in the frontier of science. And when you can't be in the frontier of science, you should hang the boots. So today, my major interest has shifted from what I did to mentoring uh, health informatics startups. I'm involved with several of them. And I can see today there are young people whom I mentored has already gone to create good industry in the area of health sector. Question is, we have participated. You know, we were a poor country. We didn't have food. We had to depend on PL480. But this country could actually demonstrate from begging bowl to bread basket in mid 70s and we became food surplus nation. We did revolution with milk production. We conduct 650 million people actually can go through an election process. We demonstrated the world that we can actually have telephone conversation free of cost, virtually free of cost, the lowest cost, lowest data. So I believe we have done it 
many, many times. And the fact that we have just cost crossed uh, the number of vaccination we have done in the world is, I think we are, we are as many, much, much more than even the United States. So we have done diagnostics during COVID time. Who could believe that we'll do about 1.82 million diagnostics a day? Who could have believed that we can do actually 8 million vaccination a day? How can anybody believe that we'll actually reach 100 crore vaccination doses? So therefore, my belief is that something, if you have a dream to achieve, whether it is Dhirubhai Ambani's dream to have telephone as, the, as low as cost of the postcard, or Koreans dream to get make India mill sufficient or dream of Homi Bhabha to see how can we make uh, India nuclear power or Saravai to make sure that the satellite goes up. So all these are built on dreams. So I will say the dreaming is the most important component of doing science. As we speak in this week, when you see so many Nobel Prizes have been awarded, you will see most of them had a dream. They wanted to do things when things were not obvious. Unfortunately, my five decades of journey in Indian science, I found young people want to do things which are doable. Because that's a practice. The encouragement to do things which are, looks impossible. And one such thing is thinking of open source drug discovery. And so therefore, I want to take you through that what did we learn from COVID-19 pandemic? We are lucky, those who are working in the area of life sciences, Young people have suddenly interest has shifted from space to biology. Just imagine 2019, you would have loved 18, you would have loved to be a hero of a space scientist. Nobody would have bothered if you are looking at genomics, what you are doing, nobody's interested. Because we were on Mangaljan, movies are made. And today, suddenly everyone is Overnight started learning virology, vaccine. I'm sure Raghava has so many years of trying to convince people what is epitope. Everything has changed. Okay, diagnostics, drugs, epidemiology, even are not people learn. Immunology, antibodies, statistics, data analytics, Ayurveda, everything happened in public domain and today everybody has an interest. On the other hand, Due to lockdown, lots of people learned how to do online shopping, banking, teaching, meeting. And, you know, myself, I've never done a screen sharing through Zoom. So today I have learned that. So the elderly people like us learn to participate in discussions. And simultaneously, without traveling, we could do many things. So there is an explosion of learning and breaking the barrier of knowledge domain. Of course, as a teacher, you know, that you get energy when you can stand up and give a lecture. It is far more difficult to sit down and give a lecture and to communicate to audience whose face you cannot see. Now, adversity increases innovation and power of openness. Power of imagination and knowledge was amply demonstrated during the last few months of COVID-19, is over now, months have become a year. And it is amazing performance of the science, technology, engineering, medical students and professionals. Imagine from identification of virus to deciphering the genome sequence, expressing and characterizing the proteins, raising antibodies and development of diagnostics and vaccines candidates to clinical trial to vaccinating billion. You know, 
we often underestimate our nation although we are still waiting for covaxin approval for the waste you realize that science is not necessarily done easily or with fairness therefore it is a uphill struggle when you do science in a country where you are not surrounded by large number of powerful uh, nobel laureates so get an idea of new and convince others and to find fund is always been a challenging situation however covid has demonstrated that how our young people could actually stand up and deliver to this nation starting from novel cellular diagnostics to genome sequencing surveillance i'm very proud to say that this this generation scientist of india has demonstrated that they can actually do it with this belief people actually trying to understand the biological action of the virus medical implication treatments repurposed drugs everything was happening and it was amazing to see how many novel apps tracking devices you know covin and then whether it is aragya setu or any number robotics to deliver uh, i couldn't believe uh, that actually airports will transform the way it has transformed you know the institution gates you will be getting your facial recognition and you will move with your even go to a durga puja pandal with a pre approved uh, vaccination certificate app in bangalore you know it's amazing to me to see that we have actually reached there what is realization of the power of data sharing and open access i think raghav will be the most happy person who has pursued throughout the decade two decades how the actually what open access means so i will say at this juncture talking about the past we should not let the present go away so in tagore's words otiter kotha kohi bartoman jodi jay she kotha o kohibo na hriday jopibo jay by talking about the past the present passes away i am not going to talk about it i'll keep it in my heart so when raghav you ask me to talk about open source drug discovery i thought it is important that we talk about today and in today's context what does this mean i do realize you have students who are exposed first time to this area so i will try to see whether i can give them some idea many of you all of you mostly understand the linux and open source drug discovery is nothing for like linux for the pharma e linux was open source and today 95% of the supercomputers run on this platform whereas earlier they were all proprietary it was whether it is a cray computer or ibm computer or everything was proprietary today it is it is the amazing power of the it and that is why today you have even android without this android you would have never had mobile phone so cheap right iphone so still expensive so therefore it need to dream of disruptive innovation and open innovation in drug discovery is amply demonstrated during this covid pandemic it was in a days in 48 hours the implementations were taking place from one part of the world to the other part of the world whether it is remdesivir use or whether it is a cytokine storm as the biology was discovered we were absolutely using clinical applications it <coughs> <coughs> but it needed preparation so i remember when we discussed that at igib debo and uh, so we came up with brilliant fellow the diagnostics in 200 days from 
ideation to implementation to commercialization to market level approval the cgi i said but it had a 20 years of dream behind it it's the dream of 20 years that we should be able to become a powerful genomic diagnostics organization at igib was a dream of 20 years back similarly when we not presented and sridhar and team and uh, faruk and others and they identified the new lineage by genomic surveillance of covid virus again it was a demonstration of a dream come true so you can do things if you are prepared and it is important to be prepared well in advance for years of preparation so that you can actually demonstrate and you can see that's why the kkr wins the match sorry uh, uh, csk wins the match because it's dhoni's years of experience behind it and unfortunately kkr loses because there was a lack of experience in making a big match so in science it's important but most of the people most of the young scientists this sentence what will people say if i fail this sentence has killed more dreams than anything else in the world so my request to all of you who are listening to this lecture continue to dream and i'll just give a small example of one such dream how it has come true now if you look at genomics there was a dream of people who wanted to solve genome sequence in 1990 human genome project was launched with a cost of 3 billion dollar but there was by the time we finished first genome sequence people are already dreaming how do i make genome a thousand dollar and you can imagine the x prize was formed and today a personal genomics has been brought down to below thousand dollars whereas drug discovery from 100 million dollars to discover a drug and if you ask me if yesterday was discovered in the least possible cost and many many drugs were discovered at a very very low cost but today drug discovery has reached a bit 2 billion dollar to make it this now why this has happened one of the reason is you need a strong intellectual property protection to create availability whereas affordability needs a weaker intellectual property and personal genome sequencing was available at 2003 but was not affordable at a cost of 300 million dollar but innovation and technology allowed this to happen so there is a drastic decrease in human genome sequencing cost why can we not create a drastic decrease in drug discovery cost now what bothers us today we have entered into a market driven process where the breakthrough science leads to investment to new product to investment return of investment and increase involvement but this is lack of market incentive for neglected diseases like tuberculosis or malaria actually the tradition has not worked so somebody asked me how come we could create vaccine for covid in less than a year why have we failed to create a vaccine for tuberculosis and malaria i don't know what to answer the truth is as we speak today still 1000 people in india will die in tuberculosis and every day 1000 has died last whole two years maybe few hundred less this time because of mask wearing there is a 25% reduction in tb reporting but 300 people death 400 people death in covid makes all of us shut down inside the house so why this difference 
what makes this difference. And what it makes difference is because COVID is no longer a disease of the poor. COVID has actually hit people who are reasonably affluent, whether you are a film star or a politician or a president of the country, you are vulnerable. So therefore, science, investment, open, open source, whether it is Lancet, nature, science, opened up. COVID associated papers, open source. So you can see COVID has demonstrated that when we want, we can actually do it as a world. Do we want to solve tuberculosis? Do we want to really have it there that we will make the drugs available cheaper? And I think it is your generation and generation next need to look this at much seriously. Question is, from Wright Brothers era of 1902, when the trial and error by which even Jumbo Jet was created, I don't know whether you saw movie Aviator, you will realize that even a 747 was flown from water, sea, because there was no runway where we can put these wheels and make the flight. Since then, Boeing 777 or Airbus 380, all of them were computer designed and flown. And then the, then the computers were manufactured, the CAD simulations were done. Why can't we do the drug discovery? Why have our drug discovery still remain a serendipity and goes on this old classical clinical trial of 1946, and we are still in the Wright Brothers era. So the idea was, can we build a system level, whole organ, organ, organism, and then look at human as in the computer and put drugs in computer and see whether you can actually change the pathways. So what is it? Can we control and look at the blood pressure control by putting a, uh, looking at entire blood pressure homeostasis pathways, uh, and then see whether we can operate like this. But I realize, you know, human genome and human to put into the computer will take many, many more years. I may not be alive. Whereas let's try a small organism like bacteria, uh, tuberculosis, so that we can actually identify non-toxic targets and eventually do this. So the concept was to collaboratively aggregate the available biological genetic information and bring them into a system level. What was done for tuberculosis can be done for anything. And I think COVID was an, is an example where one can actually take it forward and understand virus-host interaction. I see on Shu, many, many of you are in this part of this uh, presentation, all the people, so they will be able to say better. And I'm sure Raghav has participated, so he knows what, uh, he will be able to elaborate many more things. So the idea was leverage the concept of virtual collaboration and crowdsourcing. You know, I, it just amazes me, I'm sure, Ongshu, if you are hearing that 2008, we actually created virtual uh, platform to work from home. Uh, it's uh, 12 years before uh, COVID hit us. And how ahead of time it was to bring people together. And it is funny that today we are doing this uh, summit uh, in virtual mode. So, so diminishing the global digital divide through virtual distributed citizen science was conceived as a future. And idea was that about 50,000 papers have to be read. Students can read them, put them together on a virtual platform. We can do annotation. But most of the people felt that it is absolutely not going to work. It will be a very complicated communication management overhead or huge. 
and to do genome scale operation. It's, it's not going to work. Unfortunately, uh, Angshu, Vinod, and several others believed in it and went ahead. And then, of course, Andrew Lean and others and Raga, so many team, people joined. Debashi, Ramu. Ramu was one of the earliest person. So we could actually form 4,000 genes reaching publications and get the entire annotation done. This was done by students, hundreds of students. The published paper was published. This is history. I'm trying to give you this. And I want to show you there's no IIT here. There are lots of institutions who are very, very, you know, coming from private organizations. And you also have Malaysia, Germany, people, students participate. So therefore, in, in science, we built actually a human network along with biological network. And I think this is first of its kind anywhere in the world to achieve and do this. So therefore, it is not that all great ideas should be generated only in the West and we should follow. And I can see many of them are now in this picture who are super leaders of Indian science. Now, what happened to these students? You know, I'm looking at now 2008, 7 to 2021, 14 years down the road, you know, 12 years is our one juke. What has happened? And you can see what has happened is the, just, the number of students, many of them are traveled abroad to various countries. Their position, they currently in the faculty, PhD, industry associated, all sorts of position they have gone. So your aspiration has completely changed. Eventually it became the virtual laboratory of network, of networks. And this, you know, most of you know, I don't have to go to elaborate, but I want to tell you the most difficult job was to bring highly talented people together to work together. And India is a rare event that you have two Bhatnagar awardees and super experts coming together to do something. And this is a pride I take that under this project, this extraordinary uh, pro, you know, protocol was developed, this software platform was developed, which even today is used. And when I went to Kashmir, uh, a student told me, said, this platform is what I'm using for my uh, drug screening. You know, it was nice to see because we can't afford to buy an imported one. And no wonder that, uh, you know, we get Olympic medals, right? We are happy. Now we got Olympic medals. And I'm sure people say we haven't got Nobel Prize. Uh, it's, yes. But it all depends on how you built up the edifice. And here is what Raghav has done under the OSDD, CRDD, OSDD. Today they have about 4.5 million hits per month and ranks one of the top in the world. So it is achievable. It is achievable because you have to believe in yourself. And this is possible. So therefore, these are the outcome of OSDD. If you look at the team who led this, many of you are going to present today. And it had also included uh, Swamia Swaminathan to get the clinical, and she became the director general of ICMR after I did right. And then she called me and asked me, can I take OSDD under ICMR? I said, why not? This is an Indian science. This is nothing to do with any, any CSR or anybody's proprietary. It's open source. So today it went under the transformation and it is presently, uh, so therefore our open source drug discovery was considered one of the first by science. The US, UK Nesta report showed it that it is the highest level of innovation at the lowest cost compared to anything else in the world. And if you take a summary of uh, 10 years, so actually in system biology in silico, non-toxic target identified 
and was completed, 33 metabolic targets identified. Identification of FDA approved repurposed drugs for metabolic targets, six drugs identified. One of them is metformin, is in two clinical trials. <coughs> in silico 14 leads identified from metabolic targets. These are the work, some of the work I carried out post retirement. And enormous amount of computational resource got developed, which I just talked about. Very interestingly, that many of the targets and leads are being followed across the world, not necessarily in India. And there is a Center for Research International in Paris, interdisciplinary CRI university, which pursues uh, TB drug screening based on the targets that we identified. One thing will be very interesting, you'll realize that a good science in India is first appreciated, good things in India, is first appreciated abroad. I don't know how many of you heard the name Satat, Satat before he got the Nobel Prize. Uh, apparently it was true for Tagore, it was true for Satin Bose, it was true for many, many people, even G. N. Ramachandra. So therefore, I will say to young people, just keep doing good things. World will recognize. Today, OSDD has gone global. Several international initiatives. Under United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 3.3, eradication of TB for 2030 has become important. OSDD as an IPR model has become an IPR Act of 20, 2016 of India, Intellectual Property Act, where clearly mentioned OSDD as a model of intellectual property. Open source, you know, open source does not mean you, you are, you know, you, you cannot hold the property, but you give it away for others to use. And COVID has demonstrated how many schools, how many college spaces were given away for uh, taking care of the people. So Open Source Pharma Foundation has been established in Bangalore to translation of OSDD results into Tata Trust funding. Government of India established Indian TB Research Consortium, Stop TB Program, involved all ministries, Department of Private Sector, including NGOs for open collaboration and coordination by ICMR. So therefore, what was a little has become a global movement. And we'll get even who believe that open source collaboration between scientists could become a drug discovery catalyst. And of course, Dr. Mashelkar in his characteristic style retweeted saying that was a pioneer in what Bill Gates is saying today, a decade ago when starting OSDD in unbelief. So, you know, you have to believe yourself. You cannot be believe others. Those who want to read the, love to read novel stories. So there's a book by Mark Stevenson. We do things differently. It has a chapter bug in the system, which covers uh, 32 pages of uh, story on open source drug discovery. And this was written after I was retired. So he came and interviewed. And I think it's an interesting read. And I'm sure uh, Angshu and others have opportunity to read. And I'm, and that's a good one. But what happened then? Of course, there is always there is a lull, lull, you know, lull period goes when things are hyped and when fun gets off. So I was told by uh, Narohari Shastri of that CSI is revised because Prime Minister wanted a drug discovery hackathon during COVID. Everybody realized that how important it is to look for new drug discovery. And this is a new drug discovery hackathon got initiated. And, and, and therefore, of course, Schrodinger has his own uh, role to play, whereas we still have, according to me, our suit is, uh, platform is available. And there were students crowdsourced the problem statements and they have been converted into track one, track two. And I'm told this is on. And many, many small students have come from various groups to participate in this. What next? So CSIR, along with uh, AMD, has formed uh, a COVID 
network and engagement by which IMD donated about nearly $2 million of worth computing. And this has been now given for, are ready for launch for to do anything to do with COVID research for next one and a half year under fourth PI. And there is a committee to consider proposal and access. And Dr. Raghav has kindly agreed to join. So therefore, uh, we should be able to, I think it is just, just going to be up this week. And we were hoping it will be up by before the month, but this has been happening. So what is the actual idea is that we have identified in a little modified OSDD model, uh, 20 to 25 national experts, champions who will take initiative. We are targeting 1000 students to participate through crowdsource platform. These 20, 25 faculties will mentor these uh, students and six open grand challenge questions related to COVID-19 and potential post pandemic challenges have been identified. Open source innovation and data sharing will be the model. Large databases are getting created, X-ray, sequence, clinical, epidemiological data for people to perform high performance computing, simulation, molecular structure prediction model, including socioeconomic model. And we are going to invite proposals. I think the proposal format is ready and it will be up. I think the Sera would have been was the target. I don't know whether it will happen by today, tomorrow, and I'm sure it will be notified. Now, what is this outcome of a dream of OSDD in today? Look at it, what happened? Open source COVID-19, Kansas State University, identification anti-COVID-19 molecules, folding at home with the support of open MM. Small molecule interaction of human AC receptor in COVID-19. Open pandemic COVID-19, approximately 300 million small molecules have been run through screening, okay, including deep mind. Open source pharma, ultra broad spectrum vaccines. Clinical trials have been taken over. Again, open access data and computational resource has been created by different organization. Next train is an open source project to genome data of COVID-19. Join up digital response to COVID, 1000 plus open source solutions for COVID-19. Open air for COVID-19 is a research results of COVID-19 associated discoveries. Open WHO, the COVID-19 channel provides learning. WHO, open COVID pledge makes our intellectual property available free. So world has changed. What was just a little dream? What was what looked to be impossible that in the pharma sector, you will actually have sharing and caring? I think this has happened. COVID has demonstrated how important it is to work together. You know, <clears throat> sympathy is all about thoughts. Empathy is thoughts and feelings. Compassion is thoughts, feeling, and action. So COVID-19 pandemic has taught us to be compassionate. Only sympathy and empathy do not serve the purpose. Now is the time to promote open source drug discovery for COVID. So while we learn from the past, we have to look forward to the future. All started with a passion. Then we developed a logic. So pathos is an important component of doing science and logos follows. So today, if you ask me, I realized during this period of decade that our problem is we are missing million. We are not able to track and find the patients. Those who track out of 2.8 million, about 1.9 million were able to track TB patients in India and they get cured. It's only those 900 million who we cannot track from which about 400,000 dies. So the challenge has shifted from drugs and applications to tracking and finding. So the dream I have that in 
health informatics, we should be able to create diagnostics, uh, which will be able to reach 40 million diagnostics we do for TB, but we need to do 100 million uh, screening in order to get annually uh, identify all the patients. So one job we do here is a digitally tracking Karnataka's uh, TB patients. That's what keeps me a little busy. And the other one is a dream that can we use mobile phone based uh, cough detection, which I hope one day will happen, by which you can identify TB patients. And based on that TB patient's identification, which was a thought we had, you know, I, I presented to Triple I to Delhi, and people have used it now for COVID. So, <coughs> so therefore, we should keep dreaming. And then we, it is the tracking if we can do. You have seen in COVID, a good tracking actually reduces infection. So from drug discovery to tracking and tracing is my new focus. So anybody has come up with any new idea where we can do crowdsource and build it up and do a new way of tracking TB patients, identify them much early and bring them into the digital platform for treatment, I think will make a difference. Thank you, Raghav. I hope I have given a glimpse of what open source means and how important it is to dream. So, Thank you, sir. Stop sharing. Thank you, sir.